Joined now on the broadcast by former Screaming Eagles forward Nick McNeil. Nick, you're drafted essentially by your home team, Cape Breton, about 90 minutes away. What was your reaction? Certainly a tremendous honor. The whole family went up to the draft. We rented a car, picked the fifth round. It was kind of disappointing it didn't go a little earlier, but then eventually I was just hoping I'd go somewhere close to home, being a maritime team, and when it was Cape Breton, I was even more excited. You, like a lot of players that were drafted at 16 at the time, got a few games in and then were a rookie the next year. How much of those first few games in 05-06 help your adjustment when you made the team as a regular the following season? It was definitely huge. Going into camp, I didn't know what to expect as a 16-year-old. I ended up being one of the last cuts, so I just wanted to go back to midget, and I had a good year in midget, so you know that helped me. It was kind of like playing with a little pissed-off attitude, wanting to back up and play with the Eagles, and ended up playing about five games that year. And then that summer, I just you know, wanted to make the team so bad. I was focused on, you know, had a good summer of training, and then eventually cracked the roster at 17. Fans also getting to hear from Joey Haddad this weekend, and you two among very few Screaming Eagles to have back-to-back 30-goal seasons. Uh, tell us what the key to that success was. I think definitely was the power play. I was good as a net front guy back then. Basically, the power play was get pucks to the net, and I worked on tipping pucks every day pretty much and since I was 17 right up to 20 years old. I was kind of a bigger body in junior and just tried to use my size in front of the net and tip pucks and use my hands to an advantage. I was just confident in front of the net. I could pretty much get my stick on anything. Once you get a couple, they start going in easier. That was definitely something I was looking forward to every time we got on the power play and definitely the players I played with. I think I was very fortunate, especially my 19 and 20-year-old year when I scored the 30. That definitely makes things easier. And in that 20-year-old season named co-captain, how much did that mean? <laughs> definitely a privilege i knew culligan was one of the first or second you know cape Breton born captains i'm pretty sure it was a tremendous honor I took pride in going to the rink every day and trying to be good to the young guys and I just tried to show my leadership on and off the ice and help you know anyone who was struggling or anyone who needed a i guess kind of a slap on the arse or someone who needed a pat on the back and that's what i tried to show on and off the ice you look at that team, had a prolonged series of success, certainly less turnover, I would say, than the, the Eagles have had in the last few years in terms of players. How close was that group that got to spend so much time together and is perhaps that group still connected to this day? Still really good buddies with Robert Slaney, Chris Culligan. Unfortunately, I don't talk to Joey as much. Played at UNB with Cully for a couple of years after the Eagle. We stay in touch quite a bit. It's good to see guys you played with seven or eight years ago you still keep in touch with. I think that's pretty cool. They're all great guys. Not too many guys that were not good guys in Cape Breton, and I think I was very fortunate to be around them, and they certainly made some of the tougher days a lot easier. You're talking about UMB, you're part of the success there, really the Cape Breton pipeline extending into Fredericton and national title. Tell us about that program. Obviously it must be exciting not only to win a national title, but the program being a big deal in Fredericton. Definitely. I think Freddie's, I guess, my second home now. Going into UNB, I think that was my main goal reason I committed there. I wanted to win a national championship, and I wanted to get better as a player personally. Gardner does a tremendous job of recruiting players. We had a really good team my first year, and I was just focused, and I really wanted to win. And I was very lucky enough that we did win my first year, and kind of took a little weight off my shoulders because kind of had a tough career ender with Cape Breton there, and I was tough pill to swallow for most of the summer. Winning that next year really helped me, I guess, mentally. Lastly, I wanted to ask about your pro career thus far. You've split between Bakersfield and now Norfolk. What have been the highlights? And tell us about the team you have there this year with the Admirals. I guess my highlight would have been my first pro goal. It was against a team called the Las Vegas Wranglers. Now they're getting an NHL team, which I think is pretty cool. Highlights, not too many yet, to be honest. Our teams haven't made the playoffs. This year our team is just fighting for a playoff spot. But we have a really good group of guys here. I think our team's turned it around tremendously over the last 10 to 15 games. I think we're one of the top teams in the league. We're really looking forward to making that playoff push. We got a new coach in Robbie Fatorik, and he's been coaching the National Hockey League for, I think, around 10 years. I think six or seven as a head coach and the rest as an assistant. He's been influential on me, and he's been really good for the guys and uh, just learn stuff from him every day, and we're just hoping to keep the train going. Thanks for this, Nick. Best of luck with everything going forward. Yeah, no problem, Pat. Thank you. That's former Scream Eagles forward Nick McNeil joining us at the intermission. You're listening to McDonald Auto Group Scream Eagles Hockey 1270 CJCB.